Hi everyone, now I'm going to go back a good 30 odd years to when I first tied uh, these bubble CDC flies. Now, this is one of the original flies that I tied. Now I'm going to tie it exactly as I did because I'm sitting tying them. Now I do have one or two videos on tying the bubble version but I've never tied the original, the actual the original, I never got the original practically the materials that I used. Uh, so uh, the only thing I'm changing obviously, I'm changing the hook. Now the, the, worst, the hooks I used at the time would be, jeez, the curved hooks were quite hard to get. You couldn't get any barbless. Uh, I'm trying to remember the hooks back then. It would be the Camasan, the B100 I think it was called, uh, which was a curved hook. I could be wrong. Um, the straight hook version was the 400. And it was a long time ago. The other hook uh, would be the fulling mill, the all purpose medium would be the straight version and the curved version would be the one for doing a dry fly and an emerger type fly would be the super grub. So, so it was a while ago. Thread, I think I used uni, I'm sure I used uni back then. Uh, probably not much, I mean if, I'm sure I did use uni. The only other company would be Gordon Griffiths, they did a, a threads. I probably did use them back then as well. But I'd be messing around, but the uni is um, uh, I felt I've used since I started really. <laughs> Other than the salts, the traditional salts. Now the first thing I'm going to do is wax the thread. Now this is a size 14, I'm going to show you the hook, sorry, the one I'm using. It's a check nib. It's obviously meant for check nibs, but there is a medium wire, a kind of standard wire and a heavy. Like obviously you don't want the heavy for the merger, you want this one. Uh, you can use a heavy, well, you can float it, uh, and if you need, if you're fishing for heavy rainbows, for instance, uh, you might need to use a heavy wire, but I, I found this okay. Uh, now, I've waxed the threads you saw, I'm going to put a layer of thread down, I'm just going to run along the thorax area to the point of the hook. Now, the the more, the flash I used was this mobile, well, if you call it mobile, it was flat. But if you look closely, there's a fine uh, nylon hair there, which is to protect the flash. So it doesn't, if it's not there, it would stretch and get weak. So you always made sure you tied that in. So pull it in and then tie it the way down. Bring the bend to this point here. Now you could just have the thread itself, or you could put a bit of dubbing on. And I'm using some dyed black seals for just a like, you don't want it too, too, uh, I read there, too heavy, uh, especially in a midge pattern. Oops. Now I want to get it up here to get it caught. doesn't want to get caught, you can see it wants to spring away. So I'm trying to encourage it to stay there. Now once I start to get it anchored to the hook, as they say, I can then, I want to keep it reasonably loose, I don't want it too tight because I want the the rib to sit into the dubbing. When you wind up until you're in line with the point of the hook, which is there, my rib. Now remember this rib has got a fine nylon fibre which helps protect it. As well as when you wind it up it will sit into the dubbing. There we are. Now I used to just wind up and then I want to form like a loop by the Basically, to, so to try to give the impression of a wing. So, if I look there, I've just formed a loop, got it. But as I wind from that point where I've got it in, I'm encouraging uh, the strand down either side of the shank. Well, I'm trying to anyway. Just, especially when I get near the body. It's quite hard to see. Where are we? I can see the nylon, but I can't see the flash there. So. And then what I did was I just trimmed it. So we got a bit of flash down either side, but still trying to obviously move it to sit right, and then use the thread dumps to encourage that to for it to stay. Just as I say, I always did it just to give the impression of the wing. I think I've encouraged all the fibre one side here. Now you could leave these fibres, these fine nylon fibre, or you could trim them out. But I never ever, I just left them. I'm just going to trim it so it's in line with the back of the hook, just about. Um, I'll take these out. 
so it looks better. But anyway, there we are. So trim away. Keep that for your next fly. How's it look? That's fine. Just so it catches the light. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can spend a bit of time moving it around, but that's fine. Now, the CDC that we used or we could buy was obviously the Marard CDC. Now, I'm using three feathers. They've all got to be at preferably the same length. So a small, medium or large, depending on how good they are. So you wanted them all laying on top of one another with a natural... There is a natural curve in these feathers. And you want the natural curve, you want the inside of the feather to be on top, so it, it curves up in a way. But what I'm going to do here is I need some of the fibres either side of these feathers to, just, to, put, to give the impression of the legs, but it's mainly the wing, obviously. It makes it look better. Yeah, I like it. And this part here, the front, is for the to form the bubble. So I pull that with my fingers to tighten it up. And then I tie this on top. Just off it to my side, come over with a thread turn. So just come over quite quick, two or three turns. I'm just pulling it in a wee bit. So look at the curve, you've got that nice curve there, you can see. I don't know if you can see that. But you've got sort of the inside of a boat, if you want to call it in here, that's what's going to hold the, the bubble. By pulling the fibre together, you get that. And then you want it to obviously tidy up. Give yourself plenty of room here. Now one of the things we do now, obviously we do a lot, is uh, I like to, the Bibio versions to add a wee bit of red. In this case it's just some red seals for. Just a wee drop. Just at the right area. Now you can put legs, I mean it, it changed over the years, I've still got, I've got different versions of this fly now. You can have hopper legs either side here as well. Now that's the red bit for the so the bibio like. Now when midge are hatching there is a, a glow of red comes off them. Ready orange, more, more red. You'll see it when especially when they hatch. They just form the thorax a wee bit with the both the red and the, the black. Now, I don't know if you can see there but there's plenty of room there. Just looking at this wing here. Maybe a wee bit too long. There's plenty of room there for a hackle, and I did put a hackle on the, the original fly, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to trim these for this flash to the back, it's a bit long. Don't like it too long. See what it's like. That's fine. As I say, I'm tying this as it was done back in the 80s, so the first thing I'm going to do now. Let's just wax the thread. When you form the bubble, just draw this over, bring all these together. Now, if you can, I'm just going to pull this back a bit. There's the flat, the the CDC either side of the feathers, and I need some of that, so I just make sure they're sitting out, and I hold the very ends of the CDC feathers, and then I take this not all the way to the back. You can like, have different lengths in the bubble. It's worth having one in line with the, or a few was for some of the back, so in line with the back of the hook, sorry, some mid body or so, or in line with say if there was a barb there. I'm doing the short one so you can see the back of the, the body. I'm encouraging fibres either side. It's quite hard to show you, but then what I do then is I come in my fingers, hold, hold the bubble length that I want. You want to do a good three or four turns there, secure. Just tapping it here to see the bubble, to open it out. Now, if you're short, you can pull it, but what I'm doing here is just making sure the bubble is open. You can lightly pull it to the, to this, the length you want. If you're not going to go back, just go back with three or four turns and then ease it back slightly. That's fine. When you're happy with the length, then you can trim away. And then I like to tidy up, make sure to tie in your CDC feathers. Now that will catch fish the way it's sitting just now. It's ideal now. But if you want to put a hackle on, 
I'm just going to use a dyed black, in this case a saddle. Now originally I'd probably used a, just a normal cape. So black's your thread. Now there's a good two head lengths here. This just to give the impression of legs. You could put, obviously, uh, pheasant knotted pheasant tail on here in front if you want. You even could put, I like to put some deer hair on the top as well, which is really good. But this is, as I say, the, the one I tied away way back in the 80s. So a couple of turns is fine. The hackles there is to give the impression of the legs, it's not, it will help a wee bit. Now once I've caught it in with two or three turns, I fold back. Form my head, just keep the thread tight. Here we go, finish. Tighten up, trim away. Trim away your hackle. And there you go, that's the original dressing. A bit of fluff there. It's always one wee fibre I can see in the top, right there. Mind you, I can see it in the telly, but I can't see it in the, in the fly, it's that fine. So, as I say, I always like to, as well, make sure that bubble's open. Now, when you're, people ask me, do you add a floatant to CDC, and the answer is yes, I do. Uh, there is some natural oils in this CDC from the bird, which will float the fly for so long and it'll probably last two or three fish but to make it last longer just put on your favourite uh, sort of floatant just rub it in uh, and it will last that far longer the bubble does you can pull it because the bubble's uh, CD, uh, air is trapped in the CDC it, it does last long and then obviously a wee bit of fan is shown to the head all the way around and there we are, and that's your original 1980s CDC fly, uh, the way it tied and material wise, it's just, it's exactly the same materials I used way back then, uh, and it caught lots of fish, it was, it went, I mean the number of fish these were catching at the time was amazing, uh, and I had lots of friends who fished in competitions and they were, Basically winning competitions so easily, uh, especially when the midge were coming off and the season was going. Uh, and they tied them in different sizes. But this time of year, probably this is but one of the main sizes, uh, the one that caught a lot. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.